Section 11 of Anecdotes of Dogs. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michelle. Anecdotes of Dogs by Edward Jesse. Chapter 3 The Collie or Shepherd's Dog. Part 2. The following anecdote is related by Captain Brown. A shepherd had driven a part of his flock to a neighboring farm, leaving his dog to watch the remainder during the day and the next night, expecting to revisit them the following morning. Unfortunately, however, when at the fair, the shepherd forgot both his dog and his sheep and did not return home till the morning of the third day. His first inquiry was whether his dog had been seen. The answer was no. Then he must be dead, replied the shepherd in a tone of anguish, for I know he is too faithful to desert his charge. He instantly repaired to the heath. The dog had sufficient strength remaining to crawl to his master's feet and express his joy at his return and almost immediately after expired. Mr. Blaine relates the following circumstance. I remember watching a shepherd boy in Scotland who was sitting on the bank of a wide but shallow stream. A sheep who had strayed to a considerable distance on the other shore of the water. The boy calling to his dog ordered him to fetch that sheep back but to do it gently, for she was heavy and lamb. I do not affect to say that the dog understood the reason for which he was commanded to perform this office in a more gentle manner than usual, but that he did understand he was to do it gently was very evident, for he immediately marched away through the water, came gently up to the side of the sheep, turned her towards the rest, and then they both walked quietly side by side to the flock. I was scarcely ever more pleased at a trifling incident in the rural scenery than this. The sense and recollection of the sheepdog were shown in the following instance. When I occupied a small farm in Surrey, I was in the habit of joining with a friend in the purchase of two hundred Chavoy sheep. The first year we had them, the shepherd who drove them from the north was asked by us how he got on. Why, very badly, said the man, for I had a young dog, and he did not manage well in keeping the sheep from running up lanes and out-of-the-way places. The next year we had the same number of sheep brought up, and by the same man in answer to our question about his journey he informed us that he got on very well for his dog had recollected all the turnings of the road which the sheep had passed the previous year and had kept them straight the whole of the way it has always appeared to me that the patriarchal flocks the shepherds and their dogs are seen to more advantage on the wild hills of cumberland and westmoreland than any other situation when i have wandered along the sides of some beautiful lakes of those countries and have witnessed the effects of light and shade at different times of day on the water in the distant hills and valleys and seen the numerous sheep scattered over the latter how delightful has been the prospect during the early morning the bright beams of the sun did not produce too much glare and heat but served to give a charming glitter to the dewdrops as they besparkled the grass and flowers the tracks of the sheep might be seen by the disappearance of the gentle dew from their path as they proceeded to their pasture driven by the watchful collie this was a scene of cheerfulness which every lover of nature would admire in the evening the calmness of the lake was delightful the light hovered over it and the reflection of the trees in the transparent water beautified the scene the beams of the setting sun glowed over the valleys and then illumined the tops of the hills then gradually disappeared but the great tints of evening still had their beauty and a diversity of them was preserved long after the greater effects of the setting sun had vanished deep shade was contrasted with former splendor till at last the lovely moon appeared a modest light and formed a streak across the lake which was occasionally broken as a ripple raised by a breeze of the gentlest kind passed over it while the sun still gleamed on the mountain side the shepherd might be observed resting at its foot while his patient dog ranged about collecting the flock and bringing them towards his master dear lovely lake never shall i forget your beauteous scenery seated in the cool of the evening under one of the noble trees on your shore the only sounds i heard were the soft ripple of the water and the late warbling of the redbreast yes i forget the humming beetle as it rapidly passed and the owl calling to its mate in the distant wood how peaceful were my feelings happy the man whose tranquil mind sees nature in her changes kind and pleased the whole surveys for him the morn benignly smiles and evening shades rewards the toils that measure out his days the varying year may shift the scene the sounding tempest lashed main and heaven's own thunder roll calmly he views the bursting storm 
tempest nor thunders can deform the quiet of his soul c b nor is the scenery from the lakes the only thing to be admired in this delightful country lanes may be traversed sheltered by the oak the ash and the hazel and only those who have seen the cumberland hazels can form an idea of the beauty of the silvery bark and luxuriant growth from these lanes there are occasional openings through which a placid lake or distant range of hills may be seen and what picturesque and rugged hills they are huge projecting rocks and verdant lawns and deep channels of rugged stone over which a foaming torrent forces its way in the rainy season and is succeeded in dry weather by a sparkling rivulet which trickles down to swell the little brooklet at the foot of the hill as it winds its way to the neighboring lake these may be seen in the patches of heather and the patient collie watching for a signal to collect a scattered flock dotted as it appears to be over the almost inaccessible heights at some distance it is difficult to see the sheep at least by a stranger partly on account of the dark color of their fleeces for they have not the whiteness of our flocks in the midland downs and partly from the shadow on the hills separated as they are from each other as the evening closes the sagacious dog receives a hint from its master and the sheep are quickly collected from places to which the shepherd could with difficulty make his way snow and frost are no check to the labors of the collie dog his exertions are indefatigable and the only reward he appears to expect is the approbation of his master the following amusing anecdote of a sort of a sheep-dog was communicated to me by the owner the dog's name was hero his habits were odd enough and he gave many instances of his sagacity the following was one of them hero was in the constant habit of accompanying the farm horses in their daily labor pacing the ploughed fields regularly aside the team and returning with them to and from his meals always taking care to scamper home at a certain hour for a more dainty portion when his mistress dined during one of these hasty visits he met a young woman whom he had never seen before wearing his mistress's cloak after looking at her with a scrutinizing eye he turned around and followed her closely to her great dismay to a neighboring village four miles off where the brother of his mistress lived and into whose house the woman entered probably concluding from this circumstance that she was a privileged person he returned quietly back again had she passed the house the dog would most probably have seized the cloak in order to restore it to his mistress i trust my readers will begin to feel some interest in this sagacious and useful animal and i will add one or two more well-authenticated anecdotes of him captain brown says that his friend mr peter MacArthur, related to him the following anecdote of a shepherd's dog which belonged to his grandfather who at that time resided in the island of mull upon one occasion a cow had been missed for some days and no trace of it could be found and a shepherd's dog called drummer was also absent on the second or third day the dog returned and taking mr macarthur's father by the coat pulled him towards the door but he did not follow it he then went to his grandfather and pulled him in the same way by the coat but without being attended to he next went to one of the men's servants and tugged at him also by the coat conceiving at last that there was something peculiar which the dog wanted they agreed to follow him this seemed to give him great pleasure and he ran barking and frisking before them till he led them to a cowshed in the middle of a field there they found the cow fixed by the horns to a beam from which they immediately extricated her and conducted her home much exhausted for want of food it is obvious that but for the sagacity of this faithful animal she certainly would have died mr john cobb farmer at tilly burney of lethnot near brochnan during a severe snowstorm in the year seventeen ninety eight had gone with his dog called caesar to a spot on the small stream of parthry a tributary of the north esk where his sheep on such occasions used to take shelter beneath some lofty precipitous rocks called ugly face which overhung the stream while employed in diving them out an immense avalanche fell from these rocks and completely buried him and his dog he found all his endeavors to extricate himself from this fearful situation in vain and at last worn out fell asleep however his dog had contrived to work his way out and returned home next day about noon the dog by whining and looking in the faces of the family and afterwards running to the door showed them that he wished them to follow him they accordingly did so accompanied by a number of men provided with spades 
he led them to the spot where his master was and after scraping away snow which had fallen from the time he had quitted the spot he quickly disappeared in the hole by which he had effected his escape they began to dig and by nightfall they found mr cobb quite benumbed standing in an upright posture but as life was not quite extinguished he was rolled in warm blankets and soon recovered as well as may be conceived he felt the greatest regard for his preserver and treated him ever afterwards with much tenderness the collie lived to a great age and when he died his master said it gave him as much pain as the death of a child and he would have buried him in a coffin had he not thought that his neighbors would turn it into ridicule a gentleman of my acquaintance had a sheep-dog which was generally kept in a yard by the side of his house in the country one day a beggar made his way into the yard armed with a stout stick with which he defended himself from the attacks of the dog who barked at and attempted to bite him on the appearance of a servant the dog ceased barking and watching his opportunity he got behind the beggar snatched the stick from his hand and carried it into the road where he left it a shepherd named clark travelling home to huntlaw parish of minto near jedborough with some sheep had occasion to pass through a small village where he went into a public house to take a dram with some old cronies whom he had met on the road leaving the sheep in charge of the dog his friends and he had indulged in a crack for several hours till he entirely forgot his drove in the meantime the dog had wearied and determined to take the sheep home himself a distance of about ten miles the shepherd on coming to the spot where he had left the animals found they were gone but knowing well that he might depend on the fidelity of his dog he followed straightway to huntlaw on coming to a gateway which had interrupted their progress he perceived the dog and sheep quietly reposing and had it not been for that bar to their course he would have taken them home two miles of their way was by a made road and the rest through an open moor one of the most interesting anecdotes i have known says sir patrick walker who related this anecdote to captain brown and the one which follows relates to a sheep-dog the names of the parties have escaped me just now but i recollect perfectly that it came from an authentic source the circumstances were these a gentleman sold a considerable flock of sheep to a dealer which the latter had not hands to drive the seller however told him he had a very intelligent dog which he would send to assist him to a place about thirty miles off and that when he reached the end of this journey he had only to feed the dog and desire him to go home the dog accordingly received his orders and set off with the flock and the drover but he was absent for so many days that his master began to have serious alarms about him when one morning to his great surprise he found the dog returned with a very large flock of sheep including the whole that he had lately sold the fact turned out to be that the drover was so pleased with the collie that he resolved to steal him and locked him up until the time when he was to leave the country the dog grew sulky and made various attempts to escape and one evening he fortunately succeeded whether the brute had discovered the drover's intention and supposed the sheep were also stolen it is difficult to say but by his conduct it looked so for he immediately went to the field collected the sheep and drove them all the way back to his master a few years ago upon a shooting party in the braes of ranoch the dogs were so worn out as to be unfit for travel our guide said he knew the shepherd who had a dog that might perhaps help us he called and the young man came with his little black collie to which as soon as he had conversed with the guide he said something in earth the dog set off in a sneaking sort of manner up the hill and when he showed any degree of keenness we hastened to follow lest it should set up the birds but the lad advised us to be canny as it was time enough when lad came back to tell in a short space lud made his appearance on a knoll and sat down and the shepherd said we might go up now for lud had found the birds the dog waited till we were ready and trotted on at his master's command who soon cautioned us to be on the alert for lud signified we were in the midst of the covey we immediately found this to be the case and in the course of the day the same thing occurred frequently the following anecdote will serve to show the strong affection of the sheep-dog i will give it in the words of a gentleman who witnessed the fact in the north of england the following instance of canine affection came under my observation at a farmsteading where i happened to be a collie belonging to the shepherd on the farm appeared very restless and agitated she frequently sent forth short howls and moaned as if in great agony what on earth is the matter with the dog i asked you see sir said the shepherd i drawn all her webs in the pond to-day and she's busy greeting for them of course i had no objection to offer to this explanation but resolved to watch her future operations 
she was not long in setting off to the pond and fishing out her offspring one strong brindled pup she seemed to lament over the most after looking at it for some time she again set off at a quick rate to a new house then in the course of erection and scooped out a deep hole among the rubbish she then went one by one deposited the remains of her young in it and covered them up most carefully after she had fulfilled the task she resumed her labors among her woolly charge as usual in the winter of the year seventeen ninety five as mr bulstead's son of great salkeld in cumberland was attending the sheep of his father upon great salkeld common he had the misfortune to fall and break his leg he was then at the distance of three miles from home there was no chance of any person's coming to so unfrequented a place within call and evening was fast approaching in his dreadful dilemma suffering extreme pain from the fracture and laying upon the damp ground at so dreary a season of the year his fearful situation suggested him the following expedient folding one of his gloves in his pocket handkerchief fastened it around the neck of the dog and rather emphatically ordered him home these dogs trained so admirably to orders and signals during their attendance upon the flock are well known to be under the most minute subjection and to execute the commands of their masters with an alacrity scarcely to be conceived perfectly convinced of some inexplicable disquietude from the situation in which his master lay he set off at a pace which soon brought him to the house where he scratched with great violence at the door for immediate admittance this obtained the parents were in the utmost alarm and consternation at his appearance especially when they had examined the handkerchief and its contents instantly concluding that some accident had befallen their son they did not delay a moment to go in search of him the dog apparently conscious that the principal part of his duty was yet to be performed anxiously led the way and conducted the agitated parents to the spot where their son lay overwhelmed in pain increased by the awful uncertainty of his situation happily he was removed just at the close of day and the necessary assistance being procured he soon recovered he was never more pleasingly engaged than when reciting the sagacity and affection of his faithful follower who then became his constant companion mr hawkes farmer of Holling, returned much intoxicated from maidstone market with his dog when the whole face of the country was covered with snow mistook his path and passed over a ditch on his right hand towards the river fortunately he was unable to get up the bank or he must have fallen into the medway at nearly high water overcome with the liquor hawks fell amongst the snow in one of the coldest nights ever remembered turning on his back he was soon asleep his dog scratched the snow about him and then mounted upon the body rolled himself around and laid him on his master's bosom for which his shaggy hide provided a seasonable covering in this state with snow falling all the time the farmer and his dog lay the whole of the night in the morning a mr finch who was out with his gun perceiving an uncommon appearance proceeded toward it at his approach the dog got off the body shook the snow from him and by significant actions encouraged mr finch to advance upon wiping the snow from the face the person was immediately recognized and was conveyed to the first house when a pulsation in the heart being evident the necessary means to recover him were employed and in a short time hawks was able to relate his own story in gratitude for his faithful friend a silver collar was made for his wearing and thus inscribed in man true friendship i long strove to find but missed my aim at length i found it in my dog most kind man blush for shame the following tale is copied from the glasgow post a few days hence while hector mccallister was on the aran hills looking after his sheep six miles from home or other habitation his two collie dogs started a rabbit which ran under a large block of granite he thrust his arm under the stone expecting to catch it but instead of doing so he removed the supports of the block which instantly came down on his arm holding him as fast as a vice his pain was great but the pains he felt were greater when he thought of home and the death he seemed doomed to die in this position he lay from ten in the morning to four in the afternoon when finding that all his efforts to extricate himself were unavailing he tried several times without effect to get his knife out of his pocket to cut his arm off his only chance was now to send home his dogs in the view of alarming his friends after much difficulty as the faithful creatures were most unwilling to leave him he succeeded and mrs mcallister seeing them return alone took the alarm and collecting the neighbors went in search of her husband led on by the faithful collies when they came to the spot poor mcallister was speechless with crying for assistance 
it required five strong men to remove the block from his arm. A further instance of reason and self-judgment was shown in the collie, which, having to collect some sheep from the sides of a gorge through which ran a morass, saw one of the animals precipitate itself into the shifting mass, where it sank immediately up to the neck, leaving nothing but his small black head visible. The dog looked at the sheep, and then at his master with an embarrassed, what shall I do kind of expression, but the latter, being too far off to notice the difficulty or to assist the dog with infinite address, seized the struggling animal by the neck and dragged it by main force to the dry land and then compelled it to join the flock he was collecting. The care a sheep dog will take of the sheep committed to his charge is extraordinary, and he will readily chastise any other dog which happens to molest them. Colonel Hamilton Smith relates that a strange cur one day bit a sheep in the rear of the flock, unseen by the shepherd the assault was committed by a tailor's dog but not unnoticed by the other which immediately seized the delinquent by the ear and dragged him into a puddle where he kept dabbing him in the mud with the utmost gravity the cur yelled the tailor came shipshod with his goose to the rescue and flung it at the sheep dog but missed him and did not venture to pick it up till the castigation was over and here i cannot do better than introduce dr walcott's peter pindar charming lines on the old shepherd dog the old shepherd's dog like his master was gray his teeth all departed and feeble his tongue yet where corin went he was followed by tray thus happy through life did they hobble along when fatigued on the grass the shepherd would lie for nap in the sun midst his slumber so sweet his faithful companion crawled constantly nigh placed his head on his lap or lay down at his feet when the winter was heard on the hill and the plain when the torrents descended and the cold was the wind if corn went forth mid the tempest and rain, Trey scorned to be left in the chimney behind. At length in the straw, Trey made his last bed, for vain against death is the stoutest endeavor. To lick corn's hand, he reared up his weak head, then fell back and closed his eyes, and ah, closed them forever. Not long after Trey did the shepherd remain, who oft o'er his grave with true sorrow would bend. Then dying thus feebly was heard the poor swain. Oh, bury me, neighbors, beside my old friend. End of section 11